Belgium, which is a favoured spot for wealthy French nationals wanting to avoid tax. BBC News. Now on Radio 4, the final part of our classic serial, The Count of Monte Cristo, has hounded two of his sworn enemies to their death. But somewhere in Paris, an innocent young woman is not answering her lover's calls. The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas Adapted by Sebastian Bonchkevich Part 4 The cool winds of September. You have nearly achieved all you set out to accomplish, Dantes. Announce a long summer's end. Know that God smiles upon you. And with those winds, as do I, the culmination, most esteemed and honored friends, of the cataclysm. Abbe Faria. Of the Count of Monte Cristo. All the pieces are now in place, are they not? They are. The voice of his friend and long dead teacher. Then soon, vengeance will be meted out upon Dangla and de Villefort. It will. But with vengeance comes responsibility, Dantes. Great responsibility. Valentine, it's me, my love, Maximilian. While in a shadowed and somewhat overgrown corner of the De Villefort garden... Are you there? Answer me if you're there. A young man... Please. ...whispers disconsolately through the cracks of a paint-peeled wall. Knock twice on the wall if you can. Answer me. Why don't you answer me? Can you imagine the unimaginable torment I went through when I heard the news, my dear Count? And on a quiet street corner in that always fashionable suburb of Auteuil... Your unimaginable concern is much appreciated, Andrea. Spilled blood still stains the stone. Oh, why one can still see the drops of... Oh. On the doorstep of the Count's magnificent country house. You didn't know him, did you, Andrea? Know him? This Cadrus from Marseille. <laughs> Whatever are you implicating, my dear Count? Uh, only he seemed to have a very accurate idea as to which room to break into. It's almost as if he had a, a plan drawn. <laughs> you surely don't imagine that I would have... I never imagine, Andrea. I ascertain. And this is this which sets you above all other men, dear Count. Did you betray me, Andrea? I, I, I did not know this man... Cadaquez. Cadrus. I did not know him, either. All proceeds well with the wedding preparations, I hope? Oh, Baron Danglars has it all in hand. And your bride-to-be? Two lovebirds could not be happier. Then it's love. Love is not nearly an appropriate enough word. I shall see you at the wedding tomorrow, Andrea. Until then, dear Count. I wondered if I might speak with you, Father. While across Paris, most honoured friends, hmm? there are only two topics of polite conversation. Um, can't it wait for this evening, Eugenie? I'm actually very busy. With what? The first is the attempted robbery at the home of the now fabled Count of Monte Cristo. With what, she says. <laughs> with what? And the second is the forthcoming wedding between the Count's ward, Andrea Cavalcanti, and the daughter of one of the wealthiest men in Paris. We're organising this wedding, that's what. Yes, most honoured friends. Baron Danglars himself. And this wedding's financial benefits are what? What would you say, Father, in your expert opinion? I beg your pardon, Eugenie. After all, you are now in a position to speculate on the markets once again, are you not, Father? Isn't there a dress fitting or something you should be attending? With the sum of money promised to you by the Count of Monte Cristo. Once my wedding to that reptile, Andrea, has been formalised, of course. You are not to speak of dear Monsieur Cavalcanti that way. I assume that you've seen the prison number dear Monsieur Cavalcanti has tattooed on his wrist. I think you should go to your room and we'll pretend this conversation never took place. Which is why I was... Eugenie! Curious. I was thinking somewhere in the region of three to four million francs. Uh, am I mistaken? 
Eugenie, please, uh, sit down. Certainly, Father. <laughs> All right. All right. Now, I want you to listen to me, sweetheart. All I want, all we want, is for you to be happily settled and comfortable. Good news, Baron uh, No, not now, Michelle. But you said I was to let you know the minute our stock valuation rose above a thousand points. No, Michelle. What I said was, not now. Thank you, Father. Most enlightening. Uh, Eugenie! You must think me very rude to impose upon your hospitality once again, Count. Not at all, Monsieur Morel. In fact, I was about to instruct my man, Jacopo, to send a message inviting you here. In regard to...? In regard to the fact that I'm making plans to leave Paris once I have settled certain outstanding issues. May we converse freely. The subject matter is somewhat delicate. Please. I have a slave. I'm sorry? In name alone, she is more a... A companion to me, and I consider her the absolute mistress of my house, Ede. Why, yes, Ede. She who addresses you. What of her? She whose task it is to describe to you, most honoured friends, the revelation. Forgive me my bluntness, but I can think of no man more suitable to court her than you, my dear Monsieur Morel. Of the Count of Monte Cristo. Quarter? Obviously, a dowry needs to be negotiated. You do me too much honor, Count, but I must most politely decline your invitation. Well, I have distressed you, forgive me. No, sir, you have not. If I might also speak candidly. Please. I am already promised. May I ask to whom? To a young lady whose, whose qualities are way beyond my limited powers of description, but a person who is. There is... There is water at your side. The reason for my visit today. You see, my dear Count, I have not heard a word from Valentine in over two weeks. Oh. This is most out of character. Even if there were some alteration in her feelings, for... The truth is, I fear that something terrible may have happened. Can you not approach her parents? Oh, her father is the Crown Prosecutor of Paris. A pleasure to see you again, my dear Count. The pleasure is all mine, I do assure you, Monsieur de Villefort. Inquiries are still ongoing, of course, into Cadrus and any nefarious accomplices he may have had in tow. But one might surmise that it was indeed an accomplice who murdered him. Well, if so, then the accomplice has saved the state some considerable expense. Two terms in Marseille, one in Toulon. This Cadrus is quite the villain. Well, I'm confident that you and your department are doing all you can to find his murderer. Monsieur. And with that, the man who consigned poor Edmond Dantes to 14 years of unspeakable anguish in the infamous Chateau d'If, solely in order to secure his good name and reputation, nods his head respectfully. No, the reason for my visit today was to invite you and your dear wife to my house. As befits a renowned and much respected defender of public justice. Your house? Accompanied by your children, of course, Edouard, and your daughter, Valentine, is it? Yeah, that, that's, is, that's most kind. Most kind. Unfortunately, though, my, my daughter is not in, in the best of health. Oh, I'm very sorry to hear that. Now, if there is nothing else, I would like Your to... Your neighbour, Abbe Bussoni. What about him? I have always found him to be a source of great spiritual comfort, should you require a shoulder upon which to lean. Oh, I, I shall bear that in mind, Count. Thank you. Now, any progress we make will immediately be communicated to you. My thanks as always. Oh, there was just one more thing. Yes. My house at Auteuil was previously owned by your first wife's parents, was it not? The Samarin? My late wife spent her childhood there. And they had a gardener, I believe, fellow by the name of Petuccio. Did they? You didn't know him? No, no. Only there are some papers I found at the house which make some reference to payments due to him. You wouldn't know anything about that, would I you? I have no recollection of the individual you refer to. Now, if there's nothing else... Well, good day to you, monsieur. Good day. But let us look a little closer and observe the tiniest tremor 
pulsing suddenly in the Crown Prosecutor's never very ruddy... Be sure to drink it all up, Valentine. ...cheek. Oh. Oh, thank you, stepmother, but I think I've had enough. This elixir can only help you regain your strength. Then why do I still feel so sick? You must not distress yourself, my dear. The medicine will take a little while to work, won't it, Edouard? If you say so, Mama. I hope you came and said hello to your sister today, young man. Did you like the picture I drew, Valentine? Oh, I loved it, Edouard. Thank you. It's a train, and when you're better, we'll go on one together, won't we? You can depend upon it. You're not going to die, are you? Oh. Honestly, Edouard, the very idea you're to go to the nursery this instant. I shall see you tomorrow, sweetheart. Bye, Valentine. Bye-bye. You must try and get some rest, mm -hmm. child. And there is great news. There is. Mm, your grandfather has finalised the alterations to his will. You and Edouard are to inherit all the wealth of the Noirtier family. Imagine. Imagine. Last night. I dreamt my mother called to me from beyond. Dear God. And I was... I was too terrified to answer. Oh, come here, child. But what do we see twitching there on the never very full or particularly generous lips of Madame Eloise de Villefort? But will you not be late for the wedding feast? A smile, perhaps. Oh, you're much more important than some silly wedding at the Dangla. <coughs> now, I'm not going anywhere until I see you finish all your medicine. The smile of one who perceives her most mendacious scheme to be... I will finish it, I promise, but please go to the wedding. All but... <coughs> as long as you see that you do... Accomplished. You'll send my regards to Eugenie. <laughs> She was always so very fond of you, my dear. <laughs> and who knows? <laughs> Perhaps I shall discover you a prospective husband this evening. <laughs> now, rest. And remember, every last drop. <sighs> oh, Maximilian. Maximilian. He sends his fondest greetings to you, ma'am. Who, who are you? I am the Count of Monte Cristo, and you must listen to me, Valentine. Listen to me very, very carefully. My compliments, dear Baron. My compliments to you, dear boy. Is the Count not with you? Uh, he's on his way, I believe. The wedding of the year, they're calling it. <laughs> Imagine all of Parisian society here in my house. Amazing. For Andrea Cavalcanti, thief and murderer, plucked from the back streets of Marseille by a mysterious man representing the person he has come to think of as his guardian angel. Why, yes, most honoured friends, the Count of Monte Cristo himself. And my angel? Uh, Eugenie is with her maid of honour. For Andrea? Well, I'm sure she will enjoy that. These last few months have passed as if in a wonderful, wonderful dream. There you are, Baron. Oh, good evening, Monsieur Cavalcanti. Baroness, may I say that you are looking ravishing this evening. <laughs> ravishing. <laughs> I see you have, as ever, spared no expense. Oh, you are too ah. kind, madame. Too kind. Uh, now, I must steal my husband away for just one moment, if you don't mind. <laughs> what? I shall await with trepidation your most imminent return. <laughs> what is it? Keep smiling, Dongla, and look only at me as I tell you this. Your daughter has disappeared. I beg you. She and that piano teacher of hers. Millie? Yes, Millie. What's she got to do with anything? Oh, do wake up, Dongla. 